Here's another example of change of variables. It's uh, an example that's moderately complicated at first, but it's I've contrived it to get maximum advantage from the changing variables. It's a little, it's definitely a bit contrived, but it shows the the ideas pretty well. Um, and I'm going to go through it as quickly as I can, and then maybe go back to it with some comments um, at the end, or maybe in the second part. So we've got an integral over an interesting region of a relatively interesting function. And the region is bounded by y equals 1 over x, which is one of these 45 degree rotated hyperbolas, y equals 3 over x, and some straight lines coming out of the origin, y equals 2, 2x and y equals 4x. Not the weirdest region ever. Definitely something you could imagine wanting to integrate over. And then we've got this integrand that involves a cosine, things like that. Could get really hairy if you don't have change of variables. So what have we got? We've got a perfect setup, though. As I said, it's a little contrived. We see the same things showing up both in the integrand and in the region, which is a really good clue that change of variables is going to be a good idea. This can be expressed as x, y equals 1. This guy can be expressed as x, y equals 3. So that x, y combination is showing up twice there and also in the integrand. This, these guys could be expressed as uh, y over x equals 4 and y over x equals 2. Aha. So rather like the example uh, in a video I just recorded with the parallelogram, we've got a situation where certain combinations of x, y can be set to constants to describe this region. And those combinations are also showing up in the integrand, which is gravy, really. It doesn't always happen that way. But that means we really should think about setting u equals x, y and v equals y over x. There's various variations on that you could do, but that's what I'll do. Okay. Um, so what that does, as in the parallelogram video, is it really doesn't really define t, the transformation from u v space to x y space. It really defines t inverse. And this is one of the things I'll skip is being careful about exactly one to one is it invertible. It's not too hard to check that it really is. Um, and this is one of those situations where it's totally going to be totally okay that we're really focusing on u and v as a, in terms of x and y, because it's really going to be fine. So what this already tells us is that if we set u equals x, y, this is going from 1 to 3, and v is y over x, it's going from 2 to 4, and it's a rectangle. So that's our s in this case. And so we have, yes, our interesting region is our transformation of our simple region. Okay. Uh, t is 1 to 1, turns out, but I'm going to uh, not worry about that too much. It's not, not too hard to see. Uh, okay, and so that already is going to make this simple. With the brick, This is going to be made simple, and then the rest of it is Jacobian. So the Jacobian, let's just purposely, we want dxy duv, but that's not what's easy to get out of this, so we're just going to go ahead and not go for that quite yet. We're going to look at the Jacobian of the backwards transformation. This is really the, the area stretching factor for T inverse. That's totally okay, because as long as we get this, we just have to take the reciprocal of it, and we're going to be good. Similar to the discussion I had at the end of the parallelogram video. Okay, so that is going to be absolute value of the determinant of the matrix of derivatives. And that's just going to be du dx, which is y, du dy, which is uh, x, dv dx, which is minus y over x squared, and dv dy, which is 1 over x. Okay, we get y over x, and then minus a minus y over x. So it's actually going to be 2y over x. Okay. Um, and here's oh wait, absolute value. Okay, now, there's a couple things that are a really big break. Well, there's a small break, which is the absolute value can go away because all of the x's and y's here are positive. Okay, so that goes away. Um, and then the really big break is that, hey, look, that's v. So we were hoping we would just go ahead with duv over dxy, and one of the issues that might come up is this is going to express itself in terms of x and y, not the variables you really want. And it might be a pain to express it in terms of u and v. What I've been trying to avoid is actually having to solve these equations for x and y in terms of u and v. Not that it's remotely hard, but I'm trying to illustrate that it's not always necessary. And in this case, 
it's really um, it's really nice because the Jacobian determinant automatically can be easily can be seen what's uh, to be in terms of phi. So um, now remember that's the Jacobian determinant if you're going from x's and y's to uv's. But all we have to do is take the reciprocal of that. Okay, so we are just about ready. Okay, so this is going to be the integral. Uh, let's put the u first, let's say. It's 1 to 3, 2 to 4. y over x was v. xy was u. And then the dA, this was the du dv over dx dy. dxy over duv. The cool thing is that that's the determinant of the inverse. And the determinant of the inverse is the reciprocal of the determinant, and so that's 1 over what we just calculated, the duv in terms of xy. And so we're just going to get a 1 over 2v, and that's v dv du, because I just chose to do it in that order. Because these are constant limits, it's almost certainly not a big deal, um, and it's not. And yet another break. Again, kind of contrived, although this actually was an accident. I didn't contrive it to be this simple, is that those v's cancel. Pretty sweet. Okay. And now we've got an incredibly simple integral. Uh, the v just integrates out. Integral 2 to 4 dv is 2. Oh, times 1 half. That cancels out. And you just get integral 1 to 3 of cosine u du, which is sine of 3 uh, minus sine of 1. Okay, good place to stop if you're you're comfortable with all that. Um, as I said, I was trying to avoid actually solving for x, y in terms of u and v. The one place where, and partly we didn't have to because it was somewhat contrived, but you don't always have to, and it's pretty cool. You can get away with that sometimes. Um, the the t being one to one issue. And t inverse, we really should check that we're not pulling the fast one here on um, things being one to one. Was this really an inverse for real? Are they either are they both really inverses and inver and um, inverses of each other? Is everything one to one? Well, that's one place where it wouldn't be crazy to actually make sure you can solve these, and then. As a double check, totally unnecessary for getting the answer. We're really done with that. We could double check and say, well, if you we weren't so clever, maybe we could do it directly in terms of dx dy over du dv. So let's go ahead and solve it. If you multiply these together, you get that y squared is uv, or y is the square root of u and v, u times v. Now that already says, hey, hmm, we might have to be careful about signs, but you know what? We determined that u and v should be in here, and it's good. So it's going to be positive. Um, and then if you divide this by this, you get that x squared is u over v. So x is the square root of u over v. Notice that it's sort of similar to this. You, it's still about multiplication and division, but you get square roots in here. OK. So again, OK, we don't want v to be 0. That would totally screw things up. We're nowhere near v equals 0. Uh, we don't want u and v to invo u over v to be negative. It's not. It's in this quadrant, and so we've got something where we can totally solve for u and v in terms of x and y, x and y in terms of u and v, as long as nothing is negative. So that's the double check we would want to be really careful about if we were paranoid about this this change of variables, and if we wanted to, if we were also paranoid about that Jacobian calculation, now we could do d x y duv directly as the value of the determinant of the matrix of derivatives, and we could just take the matrix of derivatives here. So dx du is going to be um, derivative of that, so that's, that's square root u over square root v, so it's going to be 1 over 2 root uv. dx dv is going to be minus 1 over 2, oops, minus root u over 2 v to the 3 halves. Similarly, well, this is going to be a little, little nicer. dy du 
is just root v over 2 root u. And similarly for this guy, this is going to be root u over 2 root v. I didn't actually practice this, so I hope I'm not screwing up the video by doing an extra part that's unnecessary and wrong. Um, okay, so now we're going to get um, 1 fourth, the root u's cancel out, and we get 1 over v. Minus a minus is plus, and then 1 fourth, and then root u's cancel out again, root v over v of the 3 halves, 1 over v, and indeed you get 1 over 2v. Okay, and so notice how much more complicated that was, though. Okay, so we could do it. We could solve for y and x in terms of u and v, and we get the this more complicated J J Jacobian determinant, and it does come out automatically in terms of, of u and v, and we didn't have to hope to get lucky there, but it was a little nastier. Okay, so mainly I want you to concentrate on the first bit where even though it was a little contrived, it worked out very, very nicely, and we didn't have to do a lot of extra work. When we did the extra work, it just confirmed that our answer was correct.